Um, kia ora koutou katoa. I am conspicuously not Siobhan Leachman, uh, but I will be attempting to channel her during this, uh, this session, uh, up to, and in, but not including wearing a wig. So, uh, Siobhan is an avid reuser of digital content um, provided by New Zealand Glams, which is why she wanted to give this talk today, and she's rather gutted she couldn't be here, but I'll do my best in her absence. Siobhan, if you know Siobhan, you'll know that reusing glam content is her passion. Uh, she's not a museum professional, she is uh, one of these members of the public that we are trying to engage with our collections. And I'll now switch into Siobhan mode and speak, she can speak through me. So the reason I'm here is I have problems reusing public domain digital content. So I want to explain the issues I have and offer suggestions as to how my difficulties might be mitigated by you, the GLAM community. Uh, before I start, I should say at the outset, you are my people. Each and every hardworking GLAM employee and volunteer, you are all doing amazing work with limited funds and time. I recognise what I'm about to say might make some people feel defensive, but when I name particular institutions as examples, please recognise I'm using them to illustrate the problems I'm having. I am not blaming my people, the folk doing the hard yards, attempting to do the right thing to change the institutions from the inside. I want you to get the support you need, the training, the funds, the institutional buy-in. Also recognise that this is my, Siobhan's, personal experience attempting to reuse my cultural heritage content held in trust for me by New Zealand Glams. I am by no means an expert in copyright. I'm just trying to do my best when it comes to navigating public domain, copyright and website terms and conditions. So how did all this come about? I reuse digital content and data in Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikidata every day. I like to think I'm doing so for the benefit of all New Zealanders, so that when they Google it, they can easily find content that's relevant to them. I want to improve not just their access to New Zealand content, but their ability to reuse their own cultural heritage. This is heritage content, again, held in trust for them by New Zealand Glams, heritage content that the New Zealand public have played a role in creating, collecting and donating, cultural heritage that their hard-earned taxes and rates, their payment of entry fees, their fundraising and donations go towards purchasing and maintaining. When reusing our images, I as an ordinary member of the public have to work out, preferably with GLAM guidance, whether the works provided on New Zealand GLAM websites are both culturally and legally appropriate for reuse. And I recognise, acknowledge and firmly believe that not everything provided on GLAM websites can or should be available for reuse. Other rights exist aside from copyright. The cultural status of the original work may restrict reuse. Privacy rights or donor restrictions might apply. And I look to GLAM institutions to provide guidance on these rights. Ideally, these valid justifications are explicitly stated on the institutional website, so the reason for the restriction on reuse is clear. But for the purposes of this presentation, I want to discuss those public domain works where there are no other rights that apply to the digital copy of the work. I firmly believe that publicly funded GLAMs should ensure that their culturally appropriate public domain digital content is freely reusable. But while I've been doing this work, I frequently come across what I regard as unjustified restrictions on the reuse of public domain content on New Zealand GLAM websites. So at the beginning of this year, I, Siobhan, decided on a New Year's resolution. When making this resolution, I hoped that by raising the problems I was having with the institutions themselves, this would help them clarify their instructions, rights statements, and terms and conditions on their websites. Now, I admit that I came into this assuming that publicly funded cultural heritage institutions didn't intend to be hoarders or gatekeepers. I assumed they weren't golems stroking their treasures and saying, my precious. I, I believed the mission statements of GLAMS that they were there to change hearts, minds and lives, to collect, connect and co-create knowledge to power New Zealand, to serve their communities, to enrich lives and inspire discoveries, to connect through sharing stories of peoples, lands and seas. I still believe this. 
Although, as I will explain later, this belief has wavered uh, as a result of some of the issues I've faced. So what issues do I have with reuse? Well, there are three general problems I've come across this year. The first is inconsist inconsistent reuse statements or terms of use clauses on GLAM websites. As an example of this is the National Library. Now, I love the National Library. They are by no means the only institution that suffers from this issue. I recognise that over the last year they have made massive strides improving the ability of New Zealanders to reuse the public domain content on their websites. And given the final issue I'll be discussing, I almost feel like I'm nitpicking when I raise this, but they are currently, they are currently a good example of where inconsistent statements on their various websites are causing confusion and hindering reuse of public domain content. And to show you what I mean, let's look at this public domain image. Okay, so on their website, I see this statement attached to the image. In this case, I'm looking at a photograph that was taken in 1917. So according to my guide to New Zealand copyright duration, to Papa's freely available copyright duration flowchart, uh, this photograph is likely out of copyright. However, the National Library website states that I can't reuse the image commercially without permission. And this restriction means I can't actually upload it into Wikicommons or have it appear in Wikipedia or Wikidata. So this image appears to be in the public domain, but the website is telling me it can't be used for commercial purposes. Now, I, I have no idea whether this type of restriction is actually legally enforceable in New Zealand. Can institutions in New Zealand contract out of the public domain via terms and conditions on their website? It's certainly confusing and has put me and others like me off from reusing content. But I'm looking for a way, any way, to reuse this work. So I click on the more information can be found in their terms of use link. Okay. Now, I'm normally only wanting to reuse free downloads provided by the library. So I head to the terms for free downloads paragraph. And is this image a free download? Yes, it is. So assuming that this information trumps the previous information given, and because I want to reuse the work, I will definitely assume this, I can reuse this image so long as I obey the three requirements. So I still have some restrictions imposed on me when reusing this public domain work. I have no idea whether these restrictions are actually legally enforceable in New Zealand and if they are legally enforceable, I admit it annoys me a bit that the National Library are imposing requirements on reuse of public domain works rather than just requesting the same. Yes, what they are requiring is good practice, and at least for my particular reuse, I'm not too overly burdened by it, but I do feel sorry for, say, someone wanting to reuse multiple public domain images in an artwork like a collage. The white description label next to that will just have to be umpteen words long. So I go to download the image. But there at the corner of the download page is another terms of use link. And this tells me that the file is made available for personal research only. Now you'd think not many people would even notice the small link, but you'd be wrong. There aren't that many Wikipedians in New Zealand, but I've had at least two who have been confused and put off from reusing content on the website as a result of this link. And that's a pretty small subset of the people who want to reuse these images. Now, as a result of this terms of use statement, I've written to the National Library to request permission to reuse public domain content that's available for free download. And I've had a reply in writing that says, I can ignore it. Well, this is great for me, but I do wonder, if I can ignore this statement, what other reuse requirements and statements can I ignore? Also, staff time and resources have been wasted and continue to be wasted, clearing up the confusion created by these conflicting statements. But my main concern isn't so much with the folk like me who write in. It's uh, with the New Zealanders who don't, who are put off from reusing public domain content to the detriment of everyone because of statements that are inconsistent or unclear. Now, I know that the National Library are working hard on these issues and I'm hopeful that sometime in the near future they'll be addressed. And before you start feeling virtuous thinking, well, my institution doesn't do that, 
I'd like to remind folks that the National Library are by no means the only glam institution in New Zealand who are suffering from this issue. There are others out there. And this results in New Zealanders being put off from reusing public domain content I believe they should be entitled to reuse. So I want you to go and look at your institution's website. Look up the terms and conditions. I'd like you to imagine you're a member of the public rocking up to the website for the first time. Take an example of a public domain work your institution holds that's well out of copyright, has no other issues relating to cultural status of the work, privacy, donor requirements. A work that would fall within the fallacy of a low-hanging fruit of public domain content. Follow your institution's tr website trail of reuse instructions, if that trail even exists. Exactly how simple and easy do you as a professional find it? Then think about how the public might experience it. Remember, if your institution's terms of use are inconsistent or in any way restrict reuse of public domain content, you're limiting the public's engagement with your collection. Now, there are also many GLAM institutions doing a great job making it easy to reuse public domain content. If you'd like an example of a website with right statements on their works and a terms of use page that explains those statements in a simple, easy to understand way, look no further than the Sargent Gallery. Anyone from the Sargent here? Oh, shame. I recognise that the Sargent's a much smaller institution with a much smaller collection, and I admit I'm biased in their favour as they also provide a search function where I can find all their works that are classed as no known copyright restrictions. <sighs> Says Swoon here. Their terms of use section is clear and succinct, gives an example of how to credit a work, and also gives a point of contact for future inquiries. Oh, that every glam in New Zealand was like the sergeant. Now, on to the second issue I've come across. I've frequently seen institutions place Creative Commons licenses on public domain content. They want to share what they regard as their content, but only under restrictive terms. Now, I'd hope that everyone in this room is aware that a Creative Commons license is a copyright license. And in most cases, copyright will eventually come to an end. And once a work ascends into the public domain in New Zealand, there is no New Zealand copyright to license. So I spent time this year fulfilling my New Year's resolution by writing to institutions explaining this. And my first institution was the Canterbury Museum. At the beginning of the year, and I love the Canterbury Museum, they're fabulous. They get an email from someone on the 2nd of January, peak New Year's resolution time, right when everyone's on holiday and they're still extremely responsive, replying straight away to the email, explaining what they intend to do about it, and had an amazingly quick turnaround, considering they had to correct the metadata on multiple objects on the website. And they've now added no known copyright restrictions statements to the items I brought to their attention. But some GLAM institutions have seemed to want to use Creative Commons licenses on public domain works and to ensure they get attribution um, or alternatively stop folks from reusing what they regard as their content commercially. Some institutions can't seem to understand that although they may own the physical work, the intellectual property in that work has ascended to the public domain. If a Creative Commons license is placed on a public domain work, or a copy of the same, I believe that license is unenforceable. It doesn't make any legal sense, and as a result I can ignore it. You can't license a copyright that doesn't exist. But not everyone is able or prepared to make that judgement, to take this risk. By placing Creative Commons license on a public domain work, the institution is hindering reuse of the work. Folks will be put off from reusing a work if they think they have, they have to comply with the license. I know because I've been put off reusing work, works which are appropriately Creative Commons licensed because I like to prioritise works with the least requirements for reuse. Members of the public will be confused and put off. Often this confusion is multiplied with the Creative Commons license statement being duplicated on aggregators such as eHive and Digital NZ. These aggregators rely on the original institution being correct in their rights statements and they likely field concerns from a confused public when a work is in the public domain but has had a Creative Commons license placed on it. So not only does this hinder reuse, it also wastes their time. So I believe the solution to this idea is more education of all staff, from institution board members and the chief executive down. Education on the public domain, the much smaller subset of works that fall within copyright, 
and the even smaller subset of those works which have their reuse licensed under Creative Commons. Now you all work for institutions that are amazing generators of copyrighted content. You constantly encourage the public to actively engage with your collections, and engage, to me, means reuse. You yourselves generate copyrighted content in your daily lives. You should all have a basic understanding of the public domain, copyright and creative commons. Reuse is the digital engagement that everyone at NDF is talking about, seemingly aiming for. So educate yourselves on reuse. Watch those YouTube videos, read those papers, take those courses. And now on to the third issue. Up to now I've been dealing with problems that result when an institution is sharing their content online and at least attempting to allow for some sort of reuse. But there are publicly funded GLAM institutions in New Zealand that place content online and then restrict most, if not all, potential reuses, whether the work's in the public domain or not. They attempt this through a variety of ways, but most frequently it's through a blanket restriction set out in the GLAM website terms and conditions. And over this year, I've come to realise that there are far more of these institutions than I would have believed possible. It is these institutions I've been extremely reluctant to contact. I admit that although I've written to a few during this year, if I can avoid it, I will. Given their blanket restrictions, I feel like contacting them is likely a complete waste of my time, and I also find it too emotionally draining. The frustration and distress that results when I start looking at the combination of their license statements, their terms of use and their physical entry restrictions is just too upsetting for me. I've had to take breaks from preparing this very presentation after spending time on their websites. It is hard enough writing institutions who at least are attempting to allow reuse in some form, but I find it almost impossible where there appears to be a deliberate effort to hinder the reuse of public domain content, and I get very distraught, and I don't like being distraught. So, what do they do to get me so worked up? Here's an example of the type of institution I'm going to pick, the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Again, I'd like to emphasise that they aren't the only New Zealand glam that appears to severely restrict um, the reuse of digital public domain content. They've just become the glam unfortunate enough to be picked by me as my example. Like many glam institutions in New Zealand, the Dunedin Public Art Gallery has physical entry restrictions. One of these is if a member of the public creates their own copy of a public domain artwork, you know, by taking a photograph of it, the gallery limits the reuse that people can put that copy to. And the, mem the members of the public can only reuse it for personal, non-commercial purposes only. Now, as I said, that is an unusual. Many galleries and museums do the same. But this contracting out of the public domain via terms of entry uh, is exacerbated by restrictions on reuse of digital copies of public domain works on their own website. And if you go to their website, you'll see on the bottom right link, a uh, link to the terms and conditions of use. Now, the way I read the website access clause is that the Dunedin Public Art Gallery restricts reuse of their website content to personal use only. Outside of personal use, unless the reuse falls within the fair dealing sections of the Copyright Act 1962, 1962, you have to get written permission to reuse content. Again, I don't know whether these website terms and conditions are legally enforceable in New Zealand. Can institutions restrict reuse of public domain content in New Zealand via the website terms and conditions? If they can, I would like to think that this publicly funded institution doesn't mean what they appear to say. Surely their whole reason for existence is to share their art, let the public engage with their collections. Perhaps they mitigate these blanket terms and conditions with specific terms of reuse for particular public domain artworks. But if you go to the collection tab on their website, there appear to be no right statements placed on copies of public domain works. The only information the gallery provides about copying particular works can be found on the reproductions tab, and this information gives the blanket statement that to make a reproduction of any work in the Dunedin Public Art Gallery collection, you have to fill in a form, accept their terms and conditions, and pay a fee. And this blanket restriction on reuse also appears even when searching aggregators. All 15,807 images from the Dunedin Public Art Gallery, which appear on Digital NZ, many of which are in the public domain, have a statement all rights reserved on them. The 106 files on eHive, which again include many public domain works, say all rights reserved. What rights the art gallery is reserving when the works are sent to the public domain, I do not know. So in practical terms, 
Institutions that do as the Dunedin Public Art Gallery appears to have done, take public domain works out of the public domain. Assuming such website terms and conditions are legally enforceable, institutions who use these strategies are establishing practical and perpetual control over copying these public domain works. And I'll remind you I'm discussing institutions that are publicly funded and hold these works in trust for the New Zealand public. And obviously I regard this as wrong. Institutions that do this are publicly funded hoarders of cultural heritage. Now, you might argue that institutions don't intend to do this. That all they want to do is get funding from the reuse of these works. Or alternatively, they want to control the reuse for other reasons, such as for works that are culturally sensitive. But I'd argue there are fairer mechanisms than this. If institutions are concerned about the cultural status of a work, then surely they can specifically restrict reuse of just those works alone. If institutions are relying on the argument of the need to generate funding, how much funding is actually being generated from these images? And I hope when figuring this out, they offset the administrative costs incurred from generating this type of income. If it's a significant amount, institutions can always compromise and allow for reuse of lower quality copies of public domain works, but charge for the privilege of access to their professionally produced high resolution versions. And personally, I even regard this compromise as short-sighted, but I'm desperate, so I'll settle for any crumbs they're prepared to throw my way. So I'd also re remind you that I'm discussing publicly funded institutions. The New Zealand public is already paying through taxes, rates and grants provided by organisations such as Creative New Zealand. The public is supporting the existence of these institutions by paying entry fees to exhibits. They're donating works and cash, providing free labour through volunteering. And for some institutions, this support by the New Zealand public has been happening for decades. So I firmly believe that the public deserve to be able to freely reuse that part of their heritage that's ascended to the public domain and is culturally appropriate for reuse. So what's my workflow when I come across institutions like that? Sometimes copies of their public domain works are on other websites and those other websites may have no terms or conditions on reuse or if they do, they only discuss this restriction in relation to copyright which of course no longer exists. So that's the website I copy. Sometimes I'll write to the institution asking what consequences I might suffer if I copy and reuse these works in contradiction to their terms and conditions. Other times I weigh up the risk and if I feel brave and offended enough, I might possibly take a copy for reuse without contacting the institution. Take a look at my slides for examples of this. But I'm risk averse and more often than not I don't. And I'm sad to say I don't reuse copies of these public domain treasures nor do other New Zealanders, and we're all poorer as a result. What these types of institutions and my New Year's resolution have taught me is how much I appreciate those glams that make it easy for me and the rest of New Zealand to reuse public domain content. The institutions that are working hard to allow reuse those who have easy to understand public domain rights or copyright statements, who have generous website terms of use, who provide guidance on the cultural status of works, who make it easy to download, those who give reuse guides on what you can do with the works, and those who provide suggested credit statements. This year has made me appreciate all the wonderful New Zealand glams who prioritise reuse of their collections, who enrich my life exponentially and make it easy for me to deeply engage with my cultural heritage and to those many institutions and their hard-working staff, I say a heartfelt thank you. This has been me, Mike Dickerson, channeling Siobhan Leachman. <laughs> <laughs>